that are some souls that somehow we know and feel. John Henry Newman is one of us. He shared our culture and our way of reacting. He knew places that we knew. Some years ago, with my best friend, I prayed the prayer for the canonization of Newman there where he had been, his room at Oriel College where my friend was an undergraduate. We prayed often in that chapel. He would too have prayed and preached there. We saw also the Church of St Mary the Virgin, where on a weekly basis he would preach and teach and have a huge swaying influence on the young undergraduates of Oxford. And so he was a good teacher and preacher, a good pastor, and that explains how he was never closed to grace or to light. He never sinned against the light. It was his hope, along with that of many others, that the Anglican branch of what he saw to be the church at the time would become more Catholicized. At last he found that it was going against the grain. And with the publication of Tract 90, trying to interpret the 39 Articles of the Anglican Church in a Catholic way, it was thus far and no further. The reaction was just too strong. Something similar happened in a place I know well, called the Island, near Tenby in Wales. Abbot Aylward Carlyle had founded, in that same impetus of Catholicizing the Anglican Communion, the good Anglican Benedictine community there on the island and had built the Abbey and the Abbey Church. But they were given a canonical visitation. It was the Bishop of Oxford and he concluded in his report that certain practices and tendencies had to be eliminated. The upshot was, and we have it from notes jotted there in choir at the time, the abbot at the end of that visitation celebrated what he thought to be Holy Mars, but very quickly, which would not normally be his case, went quickly into the sacristy took off quickly his chasuble and made no thanksgiving, which was unheard of, and summoned the brethren into chapter, indicating that they would go on retreat for a week, that they would pray the Holy Ghost for guidance. And so it was, the community came over to the Catholic Church, just as did John Henry Newman. His was in 1845, theirs was in 1913. Well, with him came a chunk of the Oxford movement, which did much good to the Catholic Church. High standards of education and preaching and liturgy, dignity, culture, sanctified by grace. Something similar has happened in our time with the coming of the Ordinariate through Benedict XVI, high standards, good influence by osmosis. In Newman, we have one of the last to write in the high English prosaic style of yore, a logical mind, but able to put it down in print. He spent much time writing. Indeed, in university days, I would spend the hours of study 
in the library, the Marsh Library in Bangor, on the same table as a young graduate who was doing her research, her thesis on Newman, on the concept of authority in Newman. And in the library we had all his works, including all his letters, because he always kept a copy. And we see therein his mind. It was fascinating to discover his mind. One of the greatest minds of Christendom. Hence it is that we have the desire of Edward the Sixteenth to beatify him personally and on the spot, Birmingham. And we intuit also his desire that he be made saint and doctor of the church. So great is the importance of that mind. But he thought with the church, with the church fathers, with that which was defined by St. Vincent of Lyons as what everywhere, what by all, whatever, was believed. And that which always was believed is what we have and cannot change, because it is not our own. And so it is that we have his way of putting it, Oxfordian style, and putting us against the wall. Where will we go, if not to Rome? Turn away from the Catholic Church, he says. To whom will you go? It is your only chance of peace and assurance in this turbulent, changing world. There is nothing between it and scepticism, when men exert their reason freely. Private creeds, fancy religions, may be showy and imposing to the many in their day. National religions may lie huge and lifeless and cumber the ground for centuries, and distract the attention, or confuse the judgment of the learned. But on the long run, it will be found that either the Catholic religion is verily and indeed the coming in of the unseen world into this, or that there is nothing positive, nothing dogmatic, nothing real in any of our notions as to whence we come and whither we are going. Unlearn Catholicism and you become Protestant, Unitarian, Deist, Pantheist, Skeptic, in a dreadful but infallible succession. Only not infallible. By some accident of your position or your education, and of your cast of mind. Not only, only not infallible. If you dismiss the subject of religion from your mind, deny yourself your reason, devote your thoughts to moral duties, or dissipate them in engagements of the world, go then and do your duty to your neighbour. Be just, be kindly tempered, be hospitable, set a good example, uphold religion as good for society, pursue your business or your profession.
or your pleasure. Eat and drink. Read the news. Visit your friends. Build and furnish. Plant and sow. Buy and sell. Plead and debate. Work for the world. Settle your children. Go home and die. But eschew religious inquiry. If you will not have faith, nor hope that you can have faith, if you will not join the church. Some years ago, I was asked to celebrate Holy Mass in the complex built by Newman in Dublin, the present university church, which in the back of his mind was perhaps to become an oratory in Ireland. It was in the Lady Chapel of the same, and I was using his own chalice, and I was moved. I could almost feel him around. It was the Tridentine rite. It was time standing still. We touched the same God. One generation goes, another comes and passes on uncontaminated what we have received. Lead kindly light, I wrote after celebrating. There are some moments marked with other things that are not made of earth, whose worth is such that unto wandering seconds something clings, which all the hours to be can calmly touch. I have stood there where stood a heart I know and held that held a hand still loud in poise. And I heard, holding high and bending low, in gestures old, of all the oldest noise. For silence, is the language of this place. And hurriedness holds still, for there's a while to waste in halted haste beneath this face. But now, my friend, Dost see there where the smile is not of but an angel, but of him whom here, a here, thou too didst.
So long thy power hath blessed me, show it still. Will lead me on, no more in pain or crag and torrent The night is gone, and when the moon does edge your face is smile. Which I have loved long since and lost a while.